Travel back in time with me, if you will, to the uh, mid-1990s, 1995 to be exact. Coolio's Gangster's Paradise is uh, on the top of the charts, along with TLC's Waterfalls and Creep. It was the year of Hootie, though the blowfish would be checked into rehab, uh, never to be the same after that year. Uh, there was an unprecedented heat wave in Chicago. Michael Jordan came back to the Bulls. The U.S. and the Russians played nice in outer space. Oklahoma City was reeling, and a 22-year-old Monica Lewinsky was hired as an intern at the White House. The family was very proud of that. Like most years, it was one of ups and downs. Keith was a 37-year-old widower, moping around with a lifeless job at Booklet Publishing in Elk Grove Village, playing joyless golf, though maintaining a respectable handicap, and drinking himself into a Molson ice-induced stupor, often as a way of dealing with the lonesome empty hours. Sure, he was still into music back then, but the, the Hootenhaller's early era exploration of the hardcore nursery rhyme genre only left him confused and with more uncertainty. Never let a stranger draw a map to your treehouse. <laughs> Ladina was the mother of... Oh, you're emotional. That's, this is so beautiful. Thanks for asking me to do this, by the way, Keith. Ladina was the mother of two teenage boys, and if that wasn't hard enough, she was in a bad marriage. She also worked at Booklet Publishing, part-time part on the first shift, and even though Keith worked second shift, they work in the same department, free press and plate making, so they knew of each other and interacted occasionally. Eventually, Keith went back to the first shift and started working with Ladina nearly every day. He was struck by her intelligent, intelligence and work ethic and developed a crush on her. But because she was married, you're just signing this out, eh? Because she was married, he resisted the urge to act on those feelings. This went on for about a year, them working together with at least one crush continuing to develop. What Keith didn't know at the time was that Ladina was working, up, uh, working as much OT as she could, building up a war chest of sorts to save up to get a divorce. Somewhere during that period, Keith was offered a job at a different company and discussed it with Ladina because they had grown close. Ladina played it cool at first, saying essentially, whatever man, do your own thing, whatever you think's best. What is this, a Hong Kong pizza party? <laughs> However, unbeknownst to Keith, inside she was thinking, you son of a bitch, if you take that job, I'm gonna kill you because I think I might be falling in love with you. But she didn't say that. So uh, not too long after that, it was a warm summer night, uh, and Keith's phone rang. On the other end, it was Ladina. Uh, she told Keith about her plan to leave her husband, her real feelings on Keith taking the job, and irrevocably, her budding and non-platonic sexy times feelings for Keith. <laughs> Keith calls it unquestionably the most monumentous phone call of his adult life. Which started when he was like in his mid-twenties, I think, probably, for us. Uh, a life-changing phone call. As it was, Keith was hosting a poker night that night at his house and invited Ladina over for some carrots and ranch dip and to make out on the couch while the game of poker raged on. Awkwardly in front of his friends, I'm sure. After that night, they started a defect partnership and were married within two years. Keith developed a relationship with her sons, Jared and James, and they gave each other's lives meaning again. Next year, they will celebrate 20 years of marriage. This isn't my first rodeo, it's my second. I, I got ordained to, uh, to marry my friends, uh, Joe and Michelle Smith, and uh, they had me read this passage at their wedding, and I thought it was, it's from The Velveteen Rabbit, uh, a book first published in 1922, uh, about how toys become real. Uh, here's a passage from the book that one of the wiser characters, the old horse, says. Real isn't, how you, real isn't how you are made, said the old horse. It's a thing that happens to you when a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you. Then you become real. Does it hurt, asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the old horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, asked the rabbit, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the old horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easy, or who have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to those people who don't understand. Keith and Ladina, as you well know, Marriage is a special gift, a lifelong dedication to love and a daily challenge to love each other more fully and more freely. With this understanding, I think you grab each other's hands, is that what you do for vows? Sure. With this understanding, do you, Keith, continue to take Ladina as your beloved wife? Of course I do, yes. Will you continue to be a tender, faithful husband? Yes. 
Yes. Will you continue to love and cherish her in sickness and health, for richer and for poorer, for better or for worse, and keep yourself only unto her? Yes. With this understanding, do you, Ladina, continue to take Keith as your beloved husband? Yes. Will you continue to be a tender, faithful wife? Yes. Will you continue to love and cherish him in sickness and health, for richer or for poorer, for better or for worse, and keep yourself only unto him? Yes. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in halls of stone. Nine for mortal men doomed to die. And one from Keith to his darling bride. <laughs> Rings are derived from humble beginnings of imperfect metal to create something striking where there once was nothing at all. It is customarily worn on the ring finger as it is the only finger with the vein running directly to the heart. The wearing of the ring is a visible outward sign that they have committed themselves to one another and continue to. Keith and Ladina, having witnessed your vows of affirmation with all who are here assembled here today, and by the authority of love itself, I do affirm that you have expressed your desire to continue as husband and wife. You may not know this, but an ancient belief uh, proclaims that when a couple in love kisses, a little bit of each other's soul is transported to abide in the other. At what better time than now to share your souls and to kiss? Keith and Ladina, you may seal your vows and confirm your continued commitment and love for each other with a kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present to you once again as husband and wife, Keith and Ladina Kazan. Got John Till coming up next.